You may have heard from many people throughout your life that capitalism breeds innovation, or alternatively, that competition under capitalism drives innovation. But the truth is quite the opposite. The truth is that capitalism actively stifles innovation in several different ways. The primary way that capitalism hinders innovation is the way in which researchers are managed once they are hired by large corporations. Competition under capitalism forces companies to focus on the short-term profitability. If a company works on a research project that would take several years, another company might gain market share and put them out of business before the research is complete. As a result, corporate managers place scientists under a system where, before they begin their research, they must submit a proposal outlining essentially what they plan to discover and how it might be marketable before they actually begin the research. This means that scientists are expected to know the results of their research in advance, which means that they are forced to focus on developments that are largely based on already existing technology. The focus of research under capitalism is primarily constrained to make existing technology more marketable, or alternatively, finding new uses for existing technology, as this is the most profitable strategy when short-term competitiveness is priority. When you consider all of the time and energy put into these efforts by some of the smartest scientists of our time, then all the brain drain caused by the short-term gain represents a major stifling of innovation. This is seen clearly in the efforts to make existing apps more addictive or the reinvention of products that are already on the market. Just look at any of your favorite social media platforms and you will find news feeds, stories and fleets, premium snaps, and now premium tweets. Another method capitalism uses to stifle innovation is the sniping of companies that do attempt any type of revolutionary technological advancement. When I was working on my graduate degree in biosecurity and biodefense, I saw this regularly when I was studying drugs and development for many of the world's major diseases. Whenever a new, smaller pharmaceutical company had a product in early development, often that small company would be bought up by larger, would-be competitor so that the existing drugs in the market could be sold without competition. Rather than spend the money to finish developing the new drugs in development and bringing it to market, a very expensive process, a large company would simply sit on the patent so it could continue to make a profit without having to worry about having to spend money on new manufacturing. At this point you might be thinking, what about the progress we've seen over the past few decades? Just look at the internet, or iPhones. But those past innovations were actually the result of something that might surprise you. The USSR. When the USSR was busy making its way to space, they basically put scientists in a room and let them do whatever came to mind, hoping that something good would come out of it. This led to rapid technological development that put Russian technology into space and on faraway planets like Venus and Mars. Seeing their success and a growing socialist movement back home, American politicians knew they had to do something to keep up with the progress they saw under socialism, lest the people decide that capitalism wasn't worth keeping. In response to this reality, American politicians got busy putting together programs modeled after Soviet bureaucracies under the Department of Defense and a wide range of new federal agencies. These agencies got busy developing things like highways, lasers, computers, and yes, cellular technology, operating on the same model of giving scientists a lot of free time and money and hoping they come up with something good. The US also started dumping tons of money into state universities to let tenured professors and graduate students get to work imagining whatever technology they pleased and hoping to make it a reality. This caused such a flurry of wild imagination that even Hollywood stepped in to paint pictures of fantastical futures full of flying cars, teleportation machines, and faster than light space travel, while intellectuals of the day hosted children's programs telling them of future adventures to Mars. This is where some of the more wild things that the US government did started to happen. Everything from research into brainwashing and telekinesis, all the way to anti-gravity machines. While many of these out there ideas didn't pan out, the reality is that many of them did and things like laser disks, artificial intelligence, cellular technology, GPS satellites, and the internet itself were born out of government scientists being given free time and a lot of money. Those government projects eventually were handed off to large American corporations that then turned around and made a profit off of the mass production of products based on the resulting technology. After the Soviet Union fell, however, this whole system started to change, and the capitalists came in to once again start killing innovation even under these government systems. As American politicians started cutting funding for public universities, large corporations stepped in with large donations and grant money in exchange for university students working on research that might profit the company in the long run. This led to even universities putting in place profit-minded bureaucracies to ensure that scientists would have to make sure their research would produce positive results before they got any grant money to do their research. Anyone who has had to fill out research grant application knows that this process itself 
pretty much stamps out any ability to do research on anything radical or completely new. Government agencies started putting in place reforms to look more like profit-seeking companies in order to make them more efficient under the false belief that the private sector was somehow better at innovation. Many of the offices that weren't reformed were privatized outright and handed to innovation-killing corporations that brought scientists under the management of people who were more concerned about their quarterly growth than expanding human knowledge. One only need look as far as the failed F-35 project, which despite the supposedly efficient private capitalist innovation, somehow failed to advance much beyond what had already existed for decades. More recently, when faced with a global pandemic, rather than leave the free market to be, the United States government stepped in to guarantee profits to large pharmaceutical companies, so that they wouldn't have to worry about the risks of competition and could research vaccines without having to worry about all that capitalism getting in the way of progress. It seems when push comes to shove, even self-declared capitalists realize that capitalism is very bad at innovating anything beyond finding new ways to integrate microtransactions or cloning Candy Crush.